Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Lawrence Michael, Operations Manager for Air Quality Remediation. Uh, making another video. Uh, I hope everybody's doing good out there. Uh, we're extremely busy, uh, just trying to get everything done. I've been talking about for a while doing a video on decontaminating uh, pieces of equipment that have come back uh, from different job sites and that are contaminated. Uh, I know there's been a number of comments in the comment section on a lot of our videos asking for that video. And it, it's hard to do a video on decontaminating a piece of equipment because it's contaminated, right? So in order for it to be decontaminated, it has to go inside of a decontamination chamber. It has to be all taken apart. Uh, the person that's doing the decontamination process has to have a full Tyvek suit, full face respirator with P100 filters, uh, nitro gloves, all those different things to, uh, you know, personal protective equipment to be able to protect the person who's doing the decontaminating. And in order for me to do a video inside this decontamination chamber, I would have to have all that PP on. Um, it would be pretty hard for me to talk and explain what the process is and how this piece of equipment is being decontaminated when I have a full face respirator on with filters and uh, my, my phone that I record these videos for you guys on would have to be inside, you know, a Ziploc bag or something so that it's sealed. And obviously, you know, touch screens don't work very well when they're inside plastic bags. So it does make it kind of hard to do a video strictly on how the decontamination process works. But what I can do is show an outline of how we do it, um, how we test the efficiency of the unit to make sure that it's working effectively, that it's filtering out those spores, particles, uh, at that HEPA level, so HEPA high efficiency particulate air, uh, that, that says that it has to get 99.97% of the spores, particles, things like that, down to 0.3 microns. Um, so I can go through, you know, the particle counter, how we test, uh, a, you know, a dirty piece of equipment compared to a clean piece of equipment and uh, be able to tell that that unit has been cleaned and it is uh, functioning effectively and to that HEPA standard. So... Here we have a dirty or a contaminated HEPA air scrubber. This is a HEPA 500. And then we have a clean HEPA 500. So identical pieces of equipment. And I do have to preface this. Before a piece of equipment, a you know contaminated piece of equipment, a dirty piece of equipment, before it even gets back to our shop, before it even goes onto a company vehicle, and before it even leaves the contaminated area, the job site, which... In this case, once you're removing the piece of equipment from the job site, the area is no longer contaminated, but we're gonna call that the contaminated area. Before it leaves the contaminated area, it gets HEPA vacuumed and sanitized, so wiped down, all the external surfaces wiped down, and then it gets sealed up right here with this uh, included cap so that it seals everything in. So the outside gets decontaminated, it gets put on a company vehicle, brought back to the company you know, location, goes inside this decontamination chamber, gets all taken apart, everything gets HEPA vacuumed, wiped down, so sanitized with an antimicrobial solution. Uh, the filters get changed, and then we test to make sure that it's functioning efficiently, that it's filtering out those 99.97% of the spores and particles and things like that. So while I can't open up, while I can't really dive into this unit here because it's still contaminated, it's still sealed, I can lightly, softly, gently open up this cap so that you guys can see inside and see what the filters look like when they get done on a job site and then just slowly, gently, easily close it back in so that way no spores, particles, things like that get disturbed and then get knocked out. And then I'll be able to open up this clean unit that's already been decontaminated and then show you guys you know, what it looks like when it's done. And then we'll do a particle count reading on the general air inside here and then compare it to the discharge where the air is coming out after it's been filtered of this clean unit. Now it's a five minute, set, uh, five minute test, a five minute sample for each you know, general air and then outside the discharge. So I won't have you guys sit and just watch the particle counter for five minutes each time. I'll just show you guys, you know, this is it running. We'll pause the video and then we'll come back when the sample is done. So I guess somebody could argue that because they didn't see the entire thing and it wasn't on a time lapse that it's been doctored and things like that. But, you know, we full transparency, we're the one that's making the videos so that you guys can see what's going on. 
I'm not a, a computer savvy person, so I don't know how to do that, you know, time lapse editing thing. My videos that you guys see are just straight through. There's really no editing. There's no changing. If I mess something up, well, then I messed it up. You know, there's no uh, going back and uh, let's let's do a retake. It, it doesn't work that way. So, so before I started the video, we're about five minutes in now, I set up the particle counter just in the general air so that we could see what kind of, this is a particle counter. And just so we could see what kind of particles. So on here we see 0.3 UM, so that's 0.3 microns. I don't know how blurry that is for you guys, but at 0.3 microns, there was 130,000, looks like 792. So 130,000 particles in this, in the air, in this area, 130,000. So we'll remember that because before I started the video, I just did some, some tests just so that I could have it written down for you guys so you guys could see uh, how things work and the equations and how we you know figure everything out. Again, we'll do our own thing on video so you guys can see how it works. But just as an example, when I did this test earlier, we had 176,000 particles at the 0.3 microns in just the regular air. Then I tested a dirty air scrubber and it was only at the discharge. It was discharging 7,358 particles at 0.3 microns. So you can already see even a dirty air scrubber going from 176,000 uh, particles down to 7,000 particles is a, a substantial reduction. However, 99.97% reduction would be down here, 5,284 particles from this original 176. So we need to be less than this 5,284 particles to be at that 99.97% uh, efficiency. So we then tested a clean air scrubber that's been decontaminated, the filters changed, and you can see we're at 2,400 particles, which is about half of the, the maximum required 99.97%. So a clean air scrubber with new filters went from 176,000 particles down to 2,400 particles, which is 99.999%. Uh, uh, it's definitely uh, filtering everything out quite effectively. So what we'll do, I'm left-handed, so I'll have to switch you around. So in our normal air, let's write this down. In our normal air, on this test, we had 130,792. So we'll write that down, 130,000. 792. Then we'll do a clean air scrubber. And we can write down this 2.5 microns number two. And it is, it is, we can use it for the, the equation and we can look at it. If we wanted to, we can put it on here 2.5 microns. What we're really worried about is this 0.3 microns. That's the number we're focusing on. But we can take this 2.5 microns as well. So that was 1,072. And then we'll see what shows up in the 2.5 micron range on the air scrubber, on the clean air scrubber. So we'll leave that there for now. What I want to show is this dirty air scrubber first. So the outside has been HEPA vacuumed and wiped down. You can see that this is a regular HEPA 500. So let's slowly, if we can, there's just a little tab right here that you can take this cover off. This is where air goes in. This is the intake side. This is your discharge side. That's where clean air comes out after it's been filtered. So inside here, we just slowly, gently take this off. And I don't know if you guys can see in there or not, but there's definitely a lot of dust and dirt and debris on this pre-filter. This isn't even the HEPA filter. I'm trying to find a flashlight for you. 
So I don't know if you guys can see all that dust and dirt and debris that's compacted and jammed on that filter. So what we'll do, we'll slowly and easily and gently put this back on so we don't disturb anything. And then we'll go over to this clean HEPA 500 that's all been decontaminated. This one I'm not worried about disturbing anything because it's all been cleaned. So dry ease HEPA 500, same exact model. This is what a pre-filter looks like. Let's pop these tabs so you guys can look inside. So this is a pre-filter that goes on top of the HEPA filter. So the HEPA filter sits in here. These are changeable, so uh, you can take these uh, bolts off that go all the way around, take this cover off, pull this HEPA filter out, clean everything underneath of it, and then put a new HEPA filter in when it's time or if it needs to. You always change out the pre-filter after every job. The HEPA filter, it depends on our efficiency test on whether it's filtering out 99.97% of the spores or particles down to that 0.3 microns that we talked about. So, now let's take our particle counter. Let's turn on our air scrubber. So the air scrubber is now running. We're discharging from this point here, right here. Air is going in through here, going through the pre-filter, over the HEPA filter, and then getting discharged out. Again, I wish I could show you guys more of the actual cleaning process, how the guys take everything apart, HEPA vacuum everything, sanitize everything, and then put it all back together. But it just makes it almost impossible maybe you know maybe in the future if i get better technology wise you know we could get an actual camera set it up on a tripod have it sit in the side on you know right on the outside on some uh you know uh, maybe like a through a piece of plexiglass or something that was there so that the camera was technically on the outside of the containment but could still see a perfectly clear view into the containment so that you guys could see what was going on. Maybe we could do it that way. And then I could just do a voiceover uh, over the video to explain things. But again, I'm I'm not very technologically, you know, sound. Maybe maybe one of my guys could do that and we could figure that out and, and do that video for you. But, let's see. So we just turned on our particle counter. We're gonna start the particle count reading. So I take the particle counter, I'll start it in a second, but I put it right at the discharge here and you just let it sit there for five minutes. You just have to hold it for a five minute sample. So there's a, a five second delay. And now it's a five minute sample, so it'll just run for five minutes or that 300 seconds up in the top right hand corner. And we'll just let it run for the five minutes. And like I said, I'm not gonna have you guys just sit here and you know watch the screen for five minutes. So what I'll do, I'll pause the video here and I'll come back when we have you know 30 seconds left or something, and then you guys can see what the numbers are. We'll do our you know math, we'll figure out what you know 0 0.3, uh, 0.03% of uh, the, the total, I think it was 130,000 particles. So we'll figure out what 0.03% of that is. So obviously that 0.03 is the not 99.97% that it needs to be filtered. So we'll figure that out and uh, we'll close the video out. So hang on one second and I'll come back after the five minute sample's done. All right, so we're back. We're, I have about 20 more seconds. I just wanted you know everybody to you know see what the numbers were without you know just sitting here watching the screen forever. So we have another 10 seconds left. It looks like we're at about 1,200 particles 
at 0.3 microns, so we'll give it another three seconds for it to finish running. All right, number's done. Let's turn this air scrubber off. Maybe. Okay. And then, so we can see, 0.3 microns, we're at 1,223. So let's write that down. 1,223, forgive my sloppy writing. At 2.5 microns, we were at eight. All right, so now I have to do some numbers. So 99.97% filtration requirement. So what I'm going to do, I'll have to pause the video so I can get out my calculator. Uh, I don't think I have one in my office, I'll have, and I know I can't do it on the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 130,792, which is this number that we had. Can you guys see that? So this was the number that we had from our just normal air, 130,792 particles in the air. So I'm going to take this number, and I'm going to times it by 0 0.03. That would be you know, what's left over from this 99.97. So I'm going to take that and that'll give us a number. So we'll figure out what our 0.3 micron number is. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll figure out what our 2.5 micron number is. So I'll figure that out and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I did have a calculator in my office so let's see can you guys probably not see that let's see hopefully you guys can see this hopefully so let's take that 130,792 times 0 0.03 gives us 3,923 let's round up and call it 3,924 3,924. We'll do the same thing for our 2.5 microns number was 1,072. 1,072 times 0 0.03 gives us 32.16. Let's call it 33. So the minimum, or sorry, the, the maximum amount of uh, particles yeah, one, two, two, three, and eight, yeah, okay. So the maximum amount of particles that we could have coming out of the discharge of that HEPA 500 at 0.3 microns would be 3,924 particles from the original 1,030, or sorry, 130,000 particles. We were actually at 1,223 and eight. So if this is our maximum here you can see that our number is actually let's see that's not quite a third but less than half of what's what's the maximum requirement and 1624 and this is a quarter of what the maximum requirement is so so we're definitely filtering we're far exceeding the 99.97 percent of the particle spores down to 0.3 microns that's why I don't really pay too much attention to the 2.5 microns that uh, this particle reader or particle counter will do. It is good to, to see that, okay, the number of, of spores or particles that are greater than 0.3 microns are still being eliminated and still being filtered out. But the 0.3 microns is the important thing because that's what the standard is based on. So as we can see, clean air scrubber, Again, we'll work on in the future, maybe getting a tripod set up with a camera through a, a plexiglass divider so that you guys can actually see what the decontamination process is for these units. And this is a really small unit. I picked this one because it's super easy, super simple. Uh, we do have much larger units that have a lot more parts, uh, a lot more things to clean, but I picked this one because it's easy. It would videotape well. So now that that one's decontaminated, decontaminated and cleaned, and then we tested the efficacy of the unit of the, uh, the HEPA filters and pre-filters. We know that it's filtering far better than the minimum, or sorry, the maximum, I keep messing that up. 99.97% of the spores or particles down to 0.3 microns. We know that one's good to go. 
they can get sealed up, go back on the truck for the next job. This one has to get decontaminated, you know, per that process we talked about. We'll run the same exact test on it that we just did together. Uh, we'll test the efficacy of it, make sure that it's filtering out everything that it's supposed to. If it is, great, it can get closed up, go back out on a job. If it's not, then we need to figure out what's going on. Now, obviously it gets new HEPA filters, new pre-filters, everything's cleaned out. So I've never had a unit not meet that maximum standard, but maybe if there was something weird going on, uh, maybe if the unit was failing for some reason, you would generally hear, you know, something going on in the unit, you know, a bad bearing or something, or a fan blade was broken or something, you would generally hear it, but maybe, you know, something happened, but that's why we do testing. That's why we make sure that everything's filtering out the way it's supposed to. So that way we know for a fact, because we tested it personally, that when it goes out on a job site, it's been completely decontaminated. We're starting with a completely, a completely clean slate. And we know that the filters are fil filtering out everything that they're supposed to. So I know I've rambled on this video is at 21 minutes. Um, it was something that I did want to talk about that I've been planning on making for a while. So uh, I'm glad I was able to get it done. If anybody out there has any questions about how we do these things or how we figure out these numbers or uh, want to see, you know, any other types of videos, definitely just, you know, put it down in the comments. Let us know. I appreciate everybody's time as always. I appreciate everybody watching. Uh, those of you that ask questions, I do appreciate it. Uh, we're here to help. I, you know, I say in all my videos, we're here just for full transparency so everybody can see how things are supposed to work, uh, how when things are done correctly, how they're supposed to look and how they're supposed to be done. So again, I appreciate everybody watching. Thank you all for your time and we'll see you on the next video.